Hey guys, let's talk about virtual devices. So a lot of you guys will probably not have their own Android device and will need to requ what will require to create their own Android device. This is pretty simple and pretty cool. Also note before we start that uh, Android devices are really nice because you could create other devices without owning them where you could test and see how it functions. Obviously it's always better to test it on the device itself otherwise you know create a virtual device okay so just to show you guys a bit of this uh, let's just press the play button after creating our project but when you press the play button it's gonna start building everything it requires and oh unless you already ran the device once it's being specific going there let's just shut it down for a second sorry there press the play this time it's not just gonna rebuild for that device you'll see a specific list of devices. Currently, my Google Pixel is connected, but we want to talk about these virtual devices. So here you'll see I'm miss uh, I'm having, uh, I have four devices and one that's missing that we could fix because of some error here and there. And if you don't see anything inside the virtual device or it doesn't even show it, you want to just press create new virtual device. Here you could see different categories and different phone functionalities, well, phones that are presets, okay, they're nothing really special, they're just preset to the device specs. So like, let's say Nexus 5 is a X amount size, the resolution of this, and the density of that, right? And depending what else you pick, they should be there too. You could always create a hardware profile specific to your phone, especially if you bought a phone that's foreign to, you know, America like the OnePlus One, the OnePlus Two, or any other phones like that, which you won't find here, all right? Um, when you do create the specific hardware profile, it's still gonna get you a bit of little tweaking to do with the ADB to make it work, all right? The best way to go at this is probably follow a online tutorial for your specific device, because you'll need to install it. Now, if we press, let's say we selected one, and let's go like Nexus One, which is pretty simple, fast, low density, low amount of hardware and specs required. We press next. Here you'll see recommended system images, all right? So this is the OS, you could say, that's gonna be installed on your device. Now, it doesn't mean you have to have installed this OS on it as you could just go on the 86 image or other images and see a list of the uh, OS's you could install okay so if you notice here on other images you'll see a lot of stuff you could install especially deprecated stuff which you should never ever touch don't even bother about it unless it's a company wide thing and they need it for that for some god for known reason now if we go back on the 86 device you notice the only the, the only stuff it's showing me, if you look on this section, is the x86-64. But if you go on other images, there's also this thing called ARM, A, ARM ABI, all right? Now, what's going on is, because I have an Intel processor, it's specifically telling me, hey, use this with the Haxim and all that stuff. It will work for your computer. Now, for the people not running Intel, you will need to be using the ARM ABI, okay? And obviously, the recommended and whatnot will push towards you the one that you should use. For the people that are using uh, Intel, you need to enable Haxim and also install what's required by Intel Haxim. All right? Uh, if you have questions, leave it in the comments or so, something like that. Now, let's get back here. So, let's say for now, I'm just going to stick to Nougat because I have it installed. Uh, I'll show you other places if you want to download. Uh, notice for the target, there says Android 7.1 with Google, Google APIs, right? So the Google default APIs are installed on phones. Could be there if you want them to, right? This is great when you want to interact with something or do something with the Google APIs. Otherwise, I would say ignore it. There's no point of making these virtual devices bigger than they should be and running slower than they should. Um... So, here the recommendation even tells you about it. Now, if you don't remember what um, your 
targeting the devices you could go back again on the API level distribution select the thing that's required for you the minimum or the maximum try a few devices you should at least have a few virtual devices to be able to test it correct anyway let's go with NuGet go next here you could get the virtual device and name and change a bit of specifications and so forth so on all right um, I would really say don't mess with anything used to be where you could say hey use my GPU or use this to make it faster currently it's working at the best uh, thing there is with all the new latest updates all right um, let's see what else do I need to talk about here that should be good now press finish so the moment you press finish you should save and load it and you should see it right here inside your virtual devices available to start and the moment you select it it will start it up and start running it now one thing before we end this notice that the virtual devices on Android is amazing for the sole fact that it tries to completely reproduce the device itself right this emulation that it does is the complete device as if you had it obviously there's gonna be one tiny bit difference here and there but this difference is negligible right it's as if you have that device in your hand and you're using it so whatever you see whatever happens it's most likely 99 percent chance that that's what's gonna happen on the same device that you're emulating now however note some stuff even though you're replicating a dimension and version depending on the device hardware so even though this is let's say 640 by 860 dimension and whatever X etc hardware specs it has there's other versions being released with the same dimensions but having a different hardware misses it up a bit this is why me personally I like to stick with the device creators like let's say if I was going iOS I would go with Apple devices right if I go Android I'm gonna go with Google devices so like this for myself I get less bugs as a user and also for when I get an app I still get less bugs than the XYZ Joe who went and got this device from a foreign country that's a third party OS and all that stuff you know anyway so if you look our device has just started and if we still look at our Gradle you seeing it's installing the APK at this moment at the bottom right and the moment it's finished doing that it's gonna launch it for us and there we go my first Android app with the hello world with a part to write some shenanigans right and with a little icon there well icon but all right, guys, thank you very much. See you later. I forgot to mention, if you ever want to access your virtual devices, the a AVD, just go on Tools, Android, and AVD Manager. Here you could see all your virtual devices, create more, and so forth, so on. And if you get a little bug like this, you could fix it, and so forth, so on. Um, obviously, the tool that's installed is much better on your device. This is kind of a... I don't know a software that's calling stuff to it so if you go on your if you browse in your folders where you installed everything go find the AVD there way better works much better and yeah and another thing you could also go for is the Android SDK manager inside the tools Android SDK manager in here you could select all the devices or all the OS's you want to install and say hey do you want to install the let's say the Google devices that goes with it and so forth so on so just show package details and you'll see it so let's say for Android 7.1 Nougat we have the Google API with the Intel 86 that's my device if you have a Mac this you should go with the Intel and if you're not running an Intel you should go with the ARM EAABI right now if you're going for any other devices like TVs and so forth so on obviously you need to install those now like I said for the Intel people make sure you install the Hexam tools so if we go here you should see this Intel 86 emulator accelerator Hexam installer you download it from here install it manually and restart your PC 
For the people running Windows, you might need to go on your BIOS and set uh, HackSim emulation to be enabled. Anyway, have a good day, guys. Ciao.